Hey there, it's me Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting and I wanted to take a few minutes today and show you a video on how to do some ruler work with a circular type ruler. Um, I'm showing you my Border Buddy ruler. You can get this ruler on boldnotionquilting.com in the product section uh, with the rulers. We do have a few in stock. And I wanted to show you just how you would use this to do different border and sashing designs on your quilt. Now this ruler is comprised of um, a couple different things. You have the outer circle that you can use to get a nice big seven and a half inch circle when you stitch it. You can also have some curved cross hatching lines that quarter inch lines from the outside that can allow you to do curved cross hatching, arches, swags, all different kinds of curved ruler work so that you can use this for more than just circles. And then you've got three different inner circles in the ruler that are slightly smaller than typical border and sashing widths. So um, a typical border or sashing is gonna be one inch, two inch, or three inches. And so the size of the circles are three quarters of an inch instead of one inch, one and three quarter inch instead of two inches, and two and three quarter inch instead of three inches. Cause I don't know about you, but when I piece, which isn't often, those sashings and borders sometimes are a little bit smaller than an inch or two inches or, or what have you. So um, I made them a little bit smaller so that they can fit in those sashings with no problem. I'm gonna show you some techniques today that you will utilize the ruler and some free motion quilting designs to get you some fun, fresh and funky contemporary quilting techniques and designs on your quilt tops to give you some more versatility with your one tool um, to get your quilt job done. So let's head to the machine and take a look at that now. Start with the middle of our circle and we're gonna line up our 45 degree lines in an X. So if I drew an X, it would go from the top of the sashing to the bottom of the sashing and those 45 degree lines are just touching my uh, my sashing mark and I'm um, putting my 90 degree line in line with my needle so that it's nice and straight okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and then do a string of pearls so I have to go all the way around my circle and then around my circle one half more and come up until I am at the 90 degree again and then that will alert me to being right back in the middle and then I just slide this over and do the next one and this is what's called a string of pearls. Now I want to do this a little bit different and that I've got my pearl and I'm going to come in here do a circle and get out and I leave my ruler where it is so that I stay within that circle the whole time. And I stop at my 90 degree and then slide over. Okay. Do an empty circle, stop at that 90, slide over. Make sure that your 45s are in line with your sashing, which mine were not last time. Come in and do a spiral. Go around the edge of your circle one more time. Stop at 90. And I'm kind of to the edge because my camera's in the way, so. All right, line up your 45 so that the edges of the 45s in the circle are in line with that um, sashing. Do one circle and half, 90, over. I don't know. Now, I want to show you a mistake I just made. So when I was doing that circle, you can't barely tell in the video, but right here I went over into this other circle, and I want to make that a little less apparent. And because this circle happens to be one of the spirals, I've got a little bit of wiggle room to kind of correct that. I'm just going to put my border buddy back around it. Finish my spiral, come out. And we're going to make sure that we got enough space to be on that circle edge. So I'm going to line up with what would have been that 90, right? And then I'm going to come out and correct it as much as I need to. At the very end, I'm going to show you the difference that that made in correcting it so that you can see it. So I'm going to line up my 45s with the edge. I'm going to line up my middle with my middle of my needle. Okay, hold this down.
make sure when you're using any kind of inner design, so if I've got my ruler and my design is in the middle of the acrylic, I'm not using the outside of the acrylic, that you really push against all of the edges so that you can really get that design in there and seated properly. Because if I weren't, my circle would be less round. So I can see where my sashing that I stitched is a little bit wider than it should be. Okay, and then it feels a little weird to come in here not pushing against the circle. And then you go out to finish. Interesting. So I've got a design happening behind here. Circle's not going to fit behind it. You'll see all of this when I am finished, but I've got a kind of a hexagon design that's coming into here, so I gotta make this look like it's wrapping around. So if this looks a little confusing, I apologize. But I'm gonna finish the design. Mm -hmm. This one looks like a spiral. Okay, so let's say that you filled this in. This is more than enough to look like a super cute border design. If you wanted to go in and create some contrast on either side of that, um, you could do a quick back and forth fill, which I will show you here. Um, but you don't actually have to if you're going to keep that back and forth really tight. If I want to keep my back and forth design really tight, I use a ruler, so I grab a straight edge. I'm going to go back and forth. This helps me so that I don't leave too much space in between any of my lines. Gives me a little bit of resistance on one side. So if you can keep your lines really tight, you'll create contrast between the dark of the swirl and the outside darkness of the back and forth design. Sorry about the squeaking, that's what happens when your foot rubs against your ruler too much. So do you see how this still really sticks out? If my lines were too far apart and they were as far apart as the previous design in the pomegranate that we did up here, um, you wouldn't see as much contrast between the background of the sashing and the main design that I wanted in the front. We gotta give this design a name. I kinda like peppermint swirl, gumballs. I don't know. But by now, if you're watching it, I've given it a title. <laughs> Maybe my kids will know. Dylan! Avery, come here! I'm filming. No, I have a question. See this design here that I'm filling the background in? What do these circles look like to you? What should we name this design? Snail. Snails? Snail trail? Yeah. What do you think, Dill? Uh, face. You think they have to have a face to be snail trail? Bowling balls. Bowling balls? Bowling balls. I yeah. mean, I was going to say rolling balls because it looked like the rolling grass. Oh, that's a good idea. He said rolling balls. That also sounds weird. I also, yeah, I also don't like using the word balls. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think we'll make people take it. Is it your own design that you use? Well, do you make? Yeah, 
I used the border buddy ruler with this. It's gonna need a name though. It can't be swirls and curls because it's already there. Well, they're not swirls and curls though. They're first thing. They're circles. So what else is circular? Largest lollipop. It looks like a giant layer of lollipops. Gumdrops and lollipops? Yes. Yeah. come up here if you haven't seen the pomegranate design that we just did um, you want to check out the YouTube channel for that as well it's another border buddy design see that right there that's the pomegranate one all right so you can really see the contrast of what when you fill in one side and when you don't now if you're really if it's really really busy fabric I'm not sure that I would put all of this time and effort into that um, but if it's something that you're going to see with a contrasting thread or if it's a really really plain fabric this is something that could look really stunning so the kids settled on gumdrops and lollipops so that's the name of this design so please give it a like give it a thumbs up and give it a share if it's something that you think that you'd have fun um, doing and designing with your quilting definitely add it to to your quilt tops if you are looking for the border buddy ruler you can get it on boldnotionquilting.com and it is under the product section with the rulers and don't forget to get some really awesome handy grip with it because that's what keeps the ruler in place and you can see really well up close the extra little lines and markings so when we were doing the design, see, I want to show you. It's hard with all my light. See these 90 and 45 degree lines? I would line up my 45X with my sashing, right? So it looked like this, and my needle would go from here all the way around to here and stop, and then move it over all the way around here, stop and move it over. So that's how, how I would do that design. So again, take care and happy quilting.